Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. I know we haven't done geometry puzzles in a while, and this one is a little different from the other ones because in most of our puzzles, we use the Pythagorean theorem. This puzzle will be different. So let's get started. So we do have a semicircle and a quarter circle that intersect inside a unit square, and they form a region as shown. We're going to find the shaded area. Now, how do you find the shaded area? First of all, we need to find where these curves intersect. That's an important point. So let's go ahead and mark that and try to find the coordinates of this point. Well, since we're talking about coordinates here, it would make sense if we use coordinate geometry or analytical geometry. So if you use this as your origin and kind of put this on an XY coordinate system, you can kind of talk about the equations of these circles. Circles, semicircles, quarter circles, doesn't really matter. So first of all, let's go ahead and find the equation of the semicircle. Well, our semicircle, since we're in a unit square, the center is going to be at 1 half comma 0, and the radius is going to be 1 half. So the equation for our semicircle is going to be x minus 1 half squared plus y squared is equal to 1 half squared, which is radius squared, that's going to be 1 fourth. And the equation for our circle, now the center for our circle is at 1 comma 1, and its radius is 1. So that's kind of like a unit circle, sort of, but it's not at the origin. And it looks like the equation is going to be x minus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 1. So this is like a quadratic system, and we need to solve this system to find the intersection point. Now, obviously, these two curves intersect at two points, one of them being this point, and that would be 1, 0. So one of the solutions is going to be trivial. Now, how do you solve this system? Well, one method that you can do is if you really want to simplify this and get rid of the quadratics, uh, you can subtract these equations. But uh, since I want to get a positive result, let me go ahead and subtract the smaller one from the larger. So I'm basically doing the following x squared minus 2x plus 1, and then I have plus y squared minus 2y plus 1, and then I'm subtracting the, the first equation from it, so everything will be reversed, or if you want, I can just use parentheses first, x squared minus x plus 1 fourth, and then plus y squared. And since I'm subtracting 1 minus 1 fourth, that should equal 3 fourths. So let's go ahead and simplify this. Now x squared is going to cancel out, y squared is going to cancel out, and we're going to end up with something simpler. Negative 2x plus x is going to give us negative x. And then obviously, 1 minus 1 fourth is 3 fourths, so that also cancels out, leaving us with a 0. But we do have a 1 here on the left-hand side, so we end up with negative x minus 2y plus 1 is equal to 0. So that's the relationship between x and y, and it's linear, so it's kind of nice. I can write this as x equals 1 minus 2y. So what we're going to do next is we're going to substitute this in one of the equations. I'd like to use the second one. It seems simpler. And if I substitute that, I get 1 minus 2y minus 1 quantity squared. So I'm basically working off of this. And then plus y minus 1 quantity squared is equal to 1. Let's go ahead and simplify this one. Cancels out. Negative 2y quantity squared is going to be 4y squared. And this is going to be y squared minus 2y plus 1. And that equals 1. 1 cancels out, you can add like terms, you get 5y squared minus 2y is equal to 0. If you take out a y, you get 5y minus 2 is equal to 0. And from here we get two solutions for y, y equals 0 or y equals 2 fits. Obviously, y equals 0 gives us the trivial solution we talked about. We said that 1 comma 0 is going to be one of the intersection points right here, and that's what we don't need. We do need the other intersection point, which should have a positive x-coordinate and a positive y-coordinate. So, as you can see here, y equals 2 fifths is going to give you x equals 1 fifth. So, in this case, we're talking about the ordered pair 1 fifth comma 2 fifths as our intersection point. And here we go. Let's go ahead and put that finding on the picture and then proceed and move from there. So, let me go ahead and write everything in here. So we do have this coordinate, the x-coordinate being 1 fifth, and the y-coordinate being 2 fifths. Okay, I know it's kind of hard to see, so let me go ahead and 
change these colors, use a lighter one, something like this maybe. Okay, so this is going to be one fifth and this is going to be two fifths. Okay, now how do we proceed? Well, I'd like to make some connections obviously, as always, with geometry puzzles, we'd like to make connections. So let's make some connections. What am I gonna do? Well, I'd like to connect, first of all, I would like to extend this line here so kind of like make it all the way through. And then that's going to go through there. And then I would like to connect this point to the, one of the vertices of the unit square. So like this. And then what else can I do? Let me see. Okay. I can definitely go ahead and connect it to the other vertex as well because I'm going to be using that. I think this is going to be it. And maybe one more. How about this one? Connect it to the center of the semicircle. Now, with this one, we can kind of define a couple things here. First of all, the angles are going to be super important here. We use coordinate geometry to figure out the intersection point. So we do have that information, which is nice, but we do need more information, obviously. So I'm going to be naming these regions. First of all, let me go ahead and name this region A. You know that there are two kind of bumpy regions here. I I'm going to name the smaller one A and I'll name the larger one B. Okay. So this is going to be my B and this is going to be my A and I'd like to find A plus B because that's the shaded area. All right. Now, how do we go about finding it? Well, I'm going to call this angle alpha because I'm going to need that. And this is a right triangle. And obviously here, it turns out that since this point is a midpoint, which is at one half, because this is our zero, remember, that's my zero. So this is at one half. So that means that one half minus one fifth is going to give me the length here. So let's go ahead and find this length here. If I subtract one half minus one fifth, I should be getting three tenths. Now that length is important and that this length is also important because that's two fifths. And now it's going to give me the tangent of this angle. Of course, I can do the same thing here. For example, this length here is going to be one minus two fifths, which is three fifths. And obviously, the base of this triangle is going to be, let's go ahead and define that. The base is going to be one minus one fifth. So it's going to be four fifths. Now, if you look at these two right triangles, this is one of them. And the other one is this one. You're going to notice something interesting about these triangles. Why? Because if you try to find tangent alpha here, you're going to get four thirds. So tangent alpha is four thirds. And this angle, if you call this angle beta, let's just call that angle beta. So if you call this angle, that's okay, I'm trying to use a darker color so that you can see that. Okay, let's see. Let's call this angle beta. And tangent beta is going to be, okay, again, change of colors is needed. Let's go to this one. Tangent beta is equal to two fifths divided by three tenths. And if you simplify that, you'll get two fifths multiplied by 10 thirds. And this just happens to be four thirds as well, which means that alpha equals beta. So instead of calling this angle beta, I can just call it alpha, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. This angle is alpha as well as this one. Okay, now having said that, how do we use that information, right? Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to find the area of A first, and then we're going to find the area of B. How do you find the area of A? Well, to find the area of A, if you think about it, that's kind of like a bumpy uh, section, right? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to find the area of this circular sector, which is this one, this one, and this one. And from that circular sector, I'm going to subtract the area of the isosceles triangle, which is formed by the radii of the quarter circle and the segment that connects regions A and B. I hope that makes sense. So I'm talking about this triangle now. This is a different triangle. So let me go ahead and shade that one. So this isosceles triangle is a big one, right? But it's isosceles because it's formed by the radii. So I'm going to find the area of this triangle and I'll subtract it from the circular sector and that's going to give me the area of A. So let's go ahead and proceed. How do you find the areas? Well, to find A, so that's one, what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to find the area of this uh, circular sector. How do you find the area of the circular sector? Well, this angle is alpha and its tangent is four thirds, which means its cosine is going to be its cosine is going to be three fifths, right? And that's an acute angle. All right. Now, which means that alpha is equal to cosine inverse of three fifths. Whatever that angle is, it's not one of these special angles like 30 or 45, but it's an angle that you can calculate pretty much to a certain extent. So, in this sense, uh, we can safely say that the area of the circular sector is going to be the area of the circle, which is pi r squared, which is pi, because the radius is 1, multiplied by the angle, which is cosine inverse of 3 over 5, divided by 360 degrees. I know some people are going to be mad at me, so I'm going to write the degree symbol this time. From this area of the circular sector, I need to subtract the area of the triangle. But that triangle is isosceles, and its side lengths are 1, 1, and whatever the base is. I don't care about the base because I'm going to use the law of sines here. So I can write it as 1 half times 1 times 1 times sine alpha. But sine alpha is equal to 4 fifths, so I can just go ahead and write it as 4 fifths. Let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit to see what A looks like. So A can be written as pi over 360 multiplied by cosine inverse of 3 over 5. And as you can see here, we're going to be getting minus 2 fifths. So that's the area of the smaller region, which is A. So I found A. Let's go ahead and find B now. Now finding B is more fun because it's kind of like a weird region to look at. And this is how we can find it. Okay, so for B, this is what I'd like to do. I'm going to draw a little picture here so to kind of demonstrate my thinking. So this is my semicircle. Obviously, we do have a center here, and then we do have the circular arc, which is an obtuse angle. So I'm going to drop this piece here, and then I'm going to connect these two pieces here. Okay, so what am I trying to do? Well, I call this region B. Remember that, right? That's my B. So I kind of redraw this picture. And then I, I don't care about A anymore, but I would like to find this other region, which I will call C. So how am I going to find B from here? Well, this is what I'd like to do. First of all, notice that A, B plus C can be found easily. How? Well, B plus C is a circular sector, right? And I got to find this angle. But I know that this angle is alpha. So that angle, the other one, is just going to be 180 minus alpha, which means their cosines are going to be opposite. So we know that cosine alpha is equal to 3 over 5. So cosine 180 degrees minus alpha, again, we're using degrees here, not radians, is going to be negative 3 fifths, which means that 180 minus alpha can be written as cosine inverse negative 3 fifths. As you know, the range of the cosine inverse function is going to be the first and the second quadrant, so we can have an obtuse angle by cosine inversing a negative value. Okay? So everything looks good, I think. So let's go ahead and move forward to find B plus C. What is B plus C? Well, B plus C is basically a circular sector, and the circular sector is found by the area of the whole circle, which is pi times 1 half squared, which is pi over 4, and then you're just going to multiply that by the cosine inverse of negative 3 fifths, because that's my angle, which is 180 minus alpha, and of course I need to divide this by 360 degrees. So it's going to be C plus B. Let's simplify this a little bit, or B plus C. B plus C can be written as basically if you multiply 4 times, 360 degrees, that's going to give you 1,440 degrees, but you don't need to write the degree symbol anymore, I hope, right? That's going to be multiplied by cosine inverse of negative 3 fifths. Notice that cosine inverse of 3 fifths and cosine inverse of negative 3 fifths are different because one of them is an acute angle, the other one is an obtuse angle. So I do know B plus C, but I do need to find C, right, or B. I, I got to find B. So I do need C. What is C? Well, C is just a triangle whose base is one half. Remember, that's the radius of the semicircle. And its height, from earlier, you'll probably remember that this is two fifths, which is the y coordinate of the intersection point of the semicircle and the quarter circle. Remember, the quarter circle passes through this point. Okay, now I do know the area of, well, I can find the area of the triangle, which is C. So C is equal to one half multiplied by one half, which is the base, 
multiply by the height, which is two fifths, two cancels out, that leaves us with one tenth. So now I have B plus C and I have C. So if I'm trying to find B, I would just subtract these two quantities. So B is gonna equal pi over 1440 multiplied by cosine inverse of negative three fifths. And I'm gonna subtract C from it, which is one tenth. Great, so we found A and we found B. So this is my B and this is my A. So what am I gonna do with those? Well, well we're gonna add those to find the shaded area. Let's go ahead and do that right now and simplify our answer. Okay, so we're gonna be adding these two quantities now. Let's go ahead and do that. So A plus B is going to equal, well, we have pi over 360 multiplied by cosine inverse of 3 over 5, and then plus pi over 1440 multiplied by cosine inverse of negative 3 over 5. Remember that was an obtuse angle. And then we do have the minus 1 tenth and the minus 2 fifths. But if you go ahead and simplify those expressions, one of them is going to be 4 tenths, one of them is going to be 1 tenth, and uh, their sum is going to be, because they're both negative, it's going to be negative 5 tenths, which is equivalent to 1 half. And that way, we can write our answer in the simplest form. Now, you might be wondering at this point, what is this value, right? Well, A plus B is approximately, approximately equal to 0 0.24043478449343. And three. Okay, I don't think you, would, you need that many details, but I just wanted to give you pretty much a lot of digits here, but that's what it is. Is there another way to solve this problem? That's for you to find out, and please write that in the comment section down below. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. I apologize, it was a little lengthy video because we had to talk about a lot of different things, but I hope you enjoyed it. I did enjoy solving the problem, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.